In this video, we will begin proving our various theorems and lemmas for minimum spanning trees. We're going to start with the minimum spanning tree lemma. These are just going to be some useful properties that we will use when we are analyzing our minimum spanning tree theorem that we will see next. For the purposes of this, I will go through a proof, but this will mostly be a demonstration about how does this work via this example graph that we have here. This graph here does not have a minimum spanning tree. It simply has a spanning tree visualized in red. And we're going to talk about what happens for various things in this spanning tree. So let's look at this lemma. This lemma says, let A be a spanning tree. So this red stuff is all A. And let E sub B be an edge of G, which is not in A. Let's find one such edge. One edge might be this edge here. Let's actually color that in blue to highlight what, what we mean. That edge there is E sub B. And by adding that in, the first part says that if we consider A and that edge, we union those together, then we have a cycle. So if we look, we have the cycle V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V1, we generate a cycle that it will always happen. Why does that always happen? It always happens because for it to be a tree, A must have been a connected graph. And by adding in another edge, we take the existing path from V4 to V6 to V5, and then we add another edge that therefore must create a cycle. So let's write out a proof for that. So we have a proof for part one. In A, there was already a path connecting the vertices incident on E sub B. And then as a quick justification for why that's true, that's because trees are connected. If you remember, the definition of a tree is a directed or a connected acyclic graph because trees are connected. Therefore, adding in another edge would necessarily create a cycle that is that path that already existed with E sub B. That path. and E sub B form a cycle. If we wanted to write this up more formally, we would write out what the vertices in that cycle were. We would say, for example, V1, V2, V3, V6, E sub B. And maybe if we want to make it more general, we would call this V sub K. And we'd explain why this is a cycle because there was already a path from V1 to VK, and if v, E sub B connected VK and V1, then there would necessarily be a cycle. We don't care too much because this theorem is not something I will ask you to prove. I will include a much nicer typeset version for you all to look at, but we'll roughly go through the idea of it here together. So let's get rid of this little scratch work we were talking about. So that's part one. So if we were to add E sub B, the thing we indicated in blue there, we would in in introduce a cycle into the graph. Now. We say if E sub A is not equal to E sub B, and it is part of the cycle. So that's any of these edges that are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 3 with their weights. Any of those edges, if we define B to be A when we added in E sub B, and then removed E sub A, then that is also a spanning tree of G. So let's visualize what I mean by that. Let us, for example, recolor this edge to be black, and consider removing it from the spanning tree for a second. If we notice, the result, looking at it, has no more cycles. If you wanted to, you could trace through every single possible cycle and realize they do not exist. So, by removing that edge, any of the edges in the cycle, so let's go back, we could have also colored this to be red again, and maybe removed this edge instead. So we change this edge to be black, and again, we have no more cycle. Any edge in this cycle that we talked about 
if you remove it, you now, you now have a spanning tree of G. So let's undo my change again. And why is that? Well, there is exactly one cycle in this graph because by, before we introduced it, we had a connected acyclic graph. So this cycle here is the only cycle in the graph. And by removing an edge, we therefore remove that cycle. The cycle head was unique and removing an edge would delete the cycle. There would then be a unique path that would include E sub B instead of the edge that had previously existed in that path. So since A was a tree, it was acyclic and by removing E sub A, we remove the cycle. So with that in our minds, wh wh how could we prove this maybe more rigorously? I won't do this here. What we could do is say let v6 and v5, for example, in this, exa this problem, let these be the two edges that we are on E sub A that we are removing. We need to verify that those nodes do not get removed from the graph. There is, of course, still a path connecting them, and we could explain explicitly what that path is by including E sub B in it. We would say let P1 be the path connecting the first vertex, let P2 be the path connecting the second vertex, and then introduce E sub B into that to formally write this down. I will include something similar to that in the write-up of this, but again, the details of this are not necessarily the most important part. The idea is the more important thing. So by adding an edge, we introduce a cycle, and by removing any edge in that cycle, we therefore dis connect the cycle and reobtain a tree in the graph. So we remove the cycle by removing the edge and we do not disconnect the graph. There are several different ways you can define a tree. One way is that it has number of vertices minus one edges. And if it had that to begin with, and then we added an edge, we would have the number of vertices for the number of edges. If we removed one, we would have number of vertices minus one again. So if it's connected and has that many edges, then it must be a tree. So there are several different ways you can prove this. Again, I'm not going to go through all of them here. This last part is very obvious, which says if the weight of the new edge, E sub B, is less than or equal to the weight of the edge we had before, then the weight of the new tree, B, is less than or equal to the weight of the old tree. So if you were to remove an expensive edge and replace it with a cheaper edge, so for example, in this graph, if I was to remove nine, color it black, and then color E sub B to be red and add it to the graph, of course it's cheaper now. Because I have taken out nine and added back three, I've reduced the weight by six. So my proof for three is duh. I might include more proof there, but I don't think it needs much. By adding on a smaller number to the tree, you would necessarily reduce the weight of the tree. For the next part, we have the actual theorem, the minimum spanning tree theorem, that says let t be a subtree of a minimum spanning tree, and then if we have an edge E that is a minimum weight edge connecting T to something not in T. As far as our algorithm was concerned, this was that greedy choice that we made. So if E is the greedy choice for an edge connecting your blue vertices to your white vertices, then by adding E to the tree, we would still have a minimum spanning tree or a subtree of one. So let's see how we prove that. I have a proof here. Just like we did with our proof for red black trees, we'll do this mostly by having the proof typeset there and talking about it via this example. So here we have a example we saw before where we had a minimum spanning tree of a graph. What we still haven't proven that this is a minimum spanning tree, but you hopefully believe me. And let's say we had some subtree of this. I will draw that in by highlighting the edges. Let's say we had these edges so far. That will correspond to our graph T. So this lightest blue color corresponds to graph T. And the red stuff 
corresponds to an actual minimum spanning tree. In our proof, you'll notice the first line, let's start going through it, let T be a subtree of some minimum spanning tree A. So the red corresponds to A, and we're going to find the minimum weight edge connecting T to vertices not in T. So we have an option of seven, an option of nine, an option of 11, and an option of five. So in this example, we would have to choose this edge here because it is the minimum weight edge connecting T to a vertex not in T. Notice that if that edge was already in A, like it is in this example, it would be 100% obvious that it is still a, su a subtree of a minimum spanning tree because it's already there. Suppose it wasn't. So this picture might not be helpful for this. So maybe let's do some recoloring and relabeling here to make this more reasonable. I'm gonna change this edge to be five. And now let's imagine that we added that edge I just drew. So imagine that E, this orange edge down here, is not in the edge is not in A. So this is our assumption because if it was already in A, the theorem which said that we are still a subset of a minimum spanning tree is of course true. So that part is trivial. We do not care if the edge we are adding as part of the, the minimum spanning tree we were already a subtree of. So the primary thing we need to interest ourselves in is if E is not in A. So under that assumption, if we were to consider adding this edge E to A, it would create a cycle. Why would it create a cycle? Well, A was a spanning tree and we added an edge to it. And according to part one of our minimum spanning tree lemma, adding an edge to a spanning tree will always create a cycle. So by adding E to A, it must contain a cycle by part one of the lemma. Since we have created a cycle, let's look at this example. We create a cycle here in this problem for A. That is the cycle we create. Looking at that cycle, at least one other edge in that cycle must connect T to a vertex not in T. So in this example, that would be this edge up here. And what we're going to do is consider the tree that has E as an edge but not this other edge that was part of A. So let's read that in the proof. Some edge E sub A of C must be an edge from T to a vertex not in T. So that's this edge here. Let's label that as, that edge there is what we're going to define E sub A to be. And we're gonna define B to be the subtree where we take out E sub A and add in E. And notice that this must be a spanning tree because of part two of the lemma we already proved. And now, since E was a minimum weight edge from T to vertices not in T, it, and E sub A was also that same type of edge, both E sub A and E both connected T to vertices not in T. And this was by definition the minimum one. So the weight of E must be smaller than or equal to the weight of the E sub A, this green edge up here. And therefore by part three of the lemma, we have that the weight of B must be less than or equal to the weight of A. And since A was already a minimum spanning tree, it, that you cannot have that B is actually less than A, so their weights are equal. And therefore B is also a minimum spanning tree. They are not unique. So you may, in the process of doing this, change which minimum spanning tree you are a subset of, but you will still be a subset of some minimum spanning tree. So B is a minimum spanning tree, and T union E is a subtree of it. Again, the specifics of this aren't necessarily important, but the idea that by adding an edge, we still remain a subtree of a minimum spanning tree is critically important. This says that making a greedy decision will always guarantee that we arrive at the correct solution. Why does this always work? Well, th this works a bit better because of the fact that we have a trivial case. If I had no edges in my spanning tree, so let's look at 
this example, where I have not done anything yet, in this instance, I have the null graph where I have no edges and no vertices. That is my beginning minimum spanning tree. That is, by definition, because the, the empty set is a subset of all sets, my minimum spanning tree I've drawn so far, nothing, is a subtree of A. So if I choose a vertex to start at, V1, again, the empty set of vertices is a subset of the vertices, and V1 is a subset of the ver The empty set that is the set of edges in my spanning tree so far, I've added no edges connecting V1 in this pretend example. That is a subset of all of these edges, because again, it's the empty set, and V1 is a subset of the vertices, so it's still a subtree. And then as I make my first decision, I will be a subtree of this minimum spanning tree still by the theorem. So this, this proves that our algorithm works if we always make the greedy decision, because when we start with an empty set and then continually add things, we will always be a subtree. So that is the idea behind how this works. We will see how our various algorithms can now do this idea efficiently.